It has been weeks and there is a constant complaint that I have been getting. Water ducts don't connect to the steam connectors. Well, in today's video, let's find out how to fix that. So I am in Minecraft 1.12.2 with HBMs reloaded and this is a simple breeding reactor that I have made using simple RBMK parts. No Reasim, nothing fancy, just a simple breeding reactor which seems to be doing pretty good and yeah, it's not exploding. <laughs> and the power produced is also pretty decent roughly 8 million hg per second and as far as we know the reactor is actually stable the water levels are also looking pretty good so hbms reloaded is a bit different than normal hbms so let's see what are the changes that you need to make in order to make any rbmk reactor work and yeah without any further ado let's get straight into it and check out how to make this reactor The parts that you will need for this build are the moderated fuel rod, control rods, irradiation channel, steam channel, neutron reflectors and absorber, and structural column. Also, it's highly recommended you build this up from the ground like 4 or 5 blocks so that you have some space beneath it for piping work. Start by placing your fuel rod and surround it using 4 control rods. Remember, all the fuel rods are moderated. Now, again take your fuel rod and place 3 of them on either side like this. This will total up to 7 fuel rods. Now take your irradiation column and place them two in each corners like this. So that will total up to four of them. Next up we have the steam channels. So start placing steam channels in front of all the outer fuel rods. So that will total up to six steam channels. And now grab your neutron reflectors and place them in all the corners like this. Now once all the reflectors are placed, we need to seal this reactor off by placing some neutron absorbers in front of all the steam channels that we placed. And once all of them are placed as well, just close off this reactor by placing some structural columns. If, even if you don't place them, it's totally fine but yeah, it's recommended that you place them so that your reactor can look a bit good. So once all the structural columns are placed, your reactor is done. Now set all of these steam channels to super dense steam, the third mode that is, as we are going to run it on super dense steam, so yeah. And while we are at it, place some glass covers on the fuel rods and some normal covers on all of the other columns. This is important because if you don't place these covers, your reactor is going to leak radiation, so yeah. Now once all of that is done, get rid of the temporary structure that we built and start placing some water ducts on all of the steam channels then place down your steam connectors and yeah it will not connect to the water ducts but don't really worry about it now underneath the steam channels or the steam connectors sorry start placing your super dense steam ducts once both of them have been placed like this connect the entire structure on the top and on the bottom for the steam and the water pipes There we go. So that is all the piping done and your reactor should look something like this. Now it's time to place down four biggest tanks. So try to keep them equidistant and place four of them in total. And in each one of them place down a heavy, uh, heavy infinite water barrel. And yeah. While we wait for them to fill up, let's build some other things. Now on the opposite end of the tanks or the biggest tanks, we need to place down some turbines in order to process our power or process the steam that is. So place down three turbines as we are going to run this reactor on super dense steam. So one turbine for super dense, another turbine for dense and the third turbine for normal steam. And then connect them with pipes like this. Now while you are at it, also make sure that you are setting all of the turbines to their respective steams. So the first turbine is going to be super dense steam, second one is going to be dense and the third turbine is going to be normal steam with low pressure steam coming out of it. Now between the tanks and the turbines, place down three big cooling towers. Now you might think that three is a bit overkill but then again I always make the mistake of placing down less cooling towers so this time I am going to place three. Connect all of the cooling towers on one side with low pressure steam ducts and then bring out the steam ducts or the low pressure steam duct from the final turbine into the cooling towers. 
Make sure that you leave enough gap for the cables that are gonna be in front of the turbines. Now once they are connected, let's get to the important part which is setting up the water tanks. So once you have set up the console, this is how your RBMK reactor is going to look like on it. And now for the water tanks, we need a screwdriver and water ducts. So let's start with the tanks which are behind the main tanks. So connect them to the tanks on the front by bringing out water ducts and make sure that these tanks, all of the tanks are full before you do any of this. That is pretty important. So connect the tanks which are on the back to the front tanks and then track your screwdriver and right click like this. That will make sure that your fluid ducts or the water ducts are set to extraction mode. And also make sure to set these tanks to output only which is the orange mode. Now we are going to do something similar for our tanks which are in the front. So bring them ahead and connect them to the RBMK reactor. These tanks are going to be the one which supply our reactor with the water. So bring out all of these ducts and don't connect them just yet as we need to do something similar as we did on the tanks behind it, which is set these water ducts to extraction mode. And this will make sure that your fluid ducts are extracting water at their max capacity. Now the tanks in the front are going to be set on input output mode which is the green mode and the tanks which are behind are going to be set to the orange mode which is output only. Once all of this is done, you should see in the console that all of the boilers or all of the steam channels have filled up with water. Now connect all of the cooling towers with water ducts as we need to transfer all of the water into these two main tanks that are placed in the front. So connect both of them using water ducts in any formation you would like to. Just make sure that the ducts don't interfere with each other. Like that would be the best. So with that taken care of, we have actually made a successful water supply that won't fail us. Or it shouldn't. <laughs> now raise all of the control rods by 100% through the console that is. And once all of the rods are up, we can place down a fuel rods. But before doing that, also make sure to connect all of the turbines via cable and then place down an energy storage block as we need somewhere to store all of our energy that we are going to be producing. So all of the outer fuel rods are going to be high enriched uranium 235 and the centermost fuel rod is going to be medium enriched plutonium 249 which is going to serve as our neutron source or the starting source. So place down high enriched uranium 235 in all of the outer rods and before placing the medium enriched plutonium MEP in the centermost rod we need to kickstart these four fuel rods this one two three and four so in order to do that just take out any one of the high enriched uranium fuel rod and replace it with the medium enriched plutonium one that should kickstart all four of the fuel rods and then place down your MEP in the center and that will start all of the rods so now all of the fuel rods are active and yeah our reactor is actually functional now in some time we should start and yes we are already producing power we are getting some steam the turbines are going and the reactor seems to be holding pretty good right now now we also have irradiation channels here so if you have some gold or lithium that you want to process into tritium, feel free to use it. This is not the fastest reactor for breeding, but yeah, it does its job. As for power, we are producing roughly 8 million HEs per second. So that is pretty good. And as you can see, our water levels are holding pretty good. So the important thing here was setting all of these ducts to extraction mode. If you don't do that, you are going to have a bad day. So yeah, that is the only thing that has changed in HBM's Reloaded. And yeah, once you set all of these ducts to extraction mode using a screwdriver, you should be good. Yes. Now, even though it looks like that the water ducts don't connect to the steam connectors, it doesn't really matter. As you can see, the steam is coming out pretty well. So yeah, that was all I had for this video, guys. I hope you guys found this helpful and your confusion was solved. If you have any more problems, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will be happy to help you guys. Peace out.